Welcome back to the first team. I'm Joe DeLeona. With me is my good friend and NFL draft analyst Ryan Roberts. Today we're doing our second to last position group show. And as I said on the running back show, I don't look forward to this conversation. I, I don't like the safety class. The safety class is barf. It is gross. There are just there's like four guys that I think that we could sit here and have a conversation about, maybe five. And then the rest, it's slamming your head against a wall. Is that, do you get the same feeling? Ryan? Uh, I mean, of like high end players. Yeah. I mean, like high end is, is in plus starters. I think I, I, I think I agree with that take. I would say this though. I think there are a lot of departmentalized safeties in this class mm -hmm. that I think could have an impact in a specialized role. But yeah, if we're talking about high end, as far as plus starters in the NFL during the first, our first two years of an ascension, then yeah. I think I mostly agree with your take. Mostly agree. Also, on that note, I've got one guy who's probably more of a slot corner. And I, you know, we considered we we ranked I, Brian Branch last year as a as a safety. And obviously, I'm talking about Javon Bullard from Georgia. He, like he's a guy who it's a weird conversation, but he has to be on here because he's one of the top safeties. If you consider him yeah, a safety, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of those guys. I mean, I, I, again, like, no, no, where am I going to? I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag with the place on my list, but like Ben Bullard, I mean, technically Sione Vaki out of Utah's in that conversation as well. I mean, even Cole Bishop mm. played a lot of overhang, right? So I wouldn't even consider him a true, true safety, but yeah, those overhang slot defenders, they have to be included in this conversation unless you think that they can play outside corner a little bit, right? Which obviously in this list, that's not the case for these guys. They're going to be more of those rotational safety nickel hybrid type of players in this type of list. All right, starting us off with my 10 through 6. Number 10 for me, Ryan, Sione Vaki yep. from Utah. Number okay. 9, Kalen Bullock from USC. Number mm -hmm. 8 is Bo Braid from Maryland. Number 7 is Malik Mustafa from Wake Forest. And then number 6 is Dadrian Taylor Demerson from Texas Tech. All right. My my ten through six is that what yeah, we're doing now? Through, is that yeah, we're going? Okay, yeah, man. Yes. All right, I'm just sorry, we've done the drill. We've done questions. the drill ten yeah, times. I, I thought we do follow up questions. Okay, number ten for me, Kalen Bullock, USC, terrible tackler, mm. very good athlete. Yeah. We can figure that one out later. What do you number do with nine. them? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, number nine, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, Texas Tech. Number eight, I believe it's actually pronounced Malik. Mustafa out of Wake Forest. Do you remember when we had Kalen oh, that's Carson right. on? Kay and he said yeah, Malik. Kaylin, yeah. Kay yeah, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest, who is a very compact but physical defender, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Bo Braid, number seven from Maryland. And then I had number six, C. Vaki out of Utah. I think we had the same exact okay, so six through ten, just in a much different order. I, I think we had the same exact players. Well, this is not... There's not a lot of safety talent, so this, there's we're not really going to be in a situation where there's going to be a lot of variability. But hey man, I, I want to hey just man. quickly talk about. I, I well, Joe, I tried to get Kitan Aladepo out of out of Oregon State on this list, man. It just didn't work out. Okay, it didn't work out. Pretty good player though. I want to just mind. quickly bring up Sione Vake though. It, yes. My only thing with him, I feel a little dirty trying to fully commit to a guy who has very limited playing time and was splitting reps at multiple positions. I, I just, I try to get really careful with these positionless yeah. guys, you know, like I, I know that the NFL doesn't typically like them and I'm, I'm trying right. to think that way a little bit more. I mm -hmm. feel like our thoughts on him might not really be perceived the same as the NFL perceives him. So here's the thing with Baki. Great story. Full-time nickel 2022 or that was his primary position. wasn't a full time player, but he had played in 2022. 2023 is a full time player. Was playing a lot of nickel early. Was rotating more and more at safety, and then obviously he was being running back as well for Andy Ludwig at Utah down the course of the season because he was really good at it, Joe. And they needed it because <laughs> I don't know if you saw that Ute offense last year, man. wasn't great. It was not a great situation, so they needed some juice in any way they could get it. Vaki is one of those players. That is an outlier, right? Because he is shorter, short arms, didn't test exceptionally well. But I'm still going to bet on him on the NFL level to figure it out because no matter what position he has in the play at Utah, 
he excelled, right? So I think he's just a really good athlete, like fr- from a fr- from a functional perspective. He didn't test like an outstanding athlete, but if you watch him at Utah, you're just like that kid is excelling at everything that the Utes asked him to do, right? So I'll bet on that kid to figure it out in that safety nickel hybrid role, play some special teams. I just think he's a really good football player, man. I truly do. All right, I'm going to start us off with my number five, Jaden Hicks from Washington State. He was listed at six foot three. I think he was a little smaller than that at the NFL Combine. He yep. is the type of guy that you're looking for for a box safety that is going to be a tight end coverage player that is going to be able to potentially erase some tight ends that maybe aren't as athletic. Uh, but he is, uh, just for his size profile, a really strong athlete. I don't think he's like an elite athlete. It doesn't really necessarily always show up on film. I think there's some mm-hmm. stiffness, certainly, to his his mobility. I also am not in the biggest love of his the angles that he takes to the football. That was kind of like where I was like not super juiced up. I think that he misfires on a lot of his angles. And as we know, the safety position more than any other, more than linebackers, corners, whatever it might be, you have to take good angles. Otherwise, you're not going to be productive and you're also going to give up some pretty big gains. So Jaden Hicks for me, I like him for what he is. I think that there is a ceiling there if you can work on his his awareness, his vision. Uh, the, the size profile is something you can't coach, but certainly some physical limitations because of how big he is. Jaden Hicks made my list, Joe. Do you want to guess where he is on my list as I give you some context two. on him? Number two, baby. Two. I love Jaden oh Hicks, God. brother. That's my guy, man. Joe, oh, man. I don't fully disagree with all of what you said, okay? I do think he's a little bit high-legged, a little bit stiff, but I'm not going to ask him to play from depth a ton. This is a true cover three, strong safety, short zone killer that plays a tenacious style, and he is the best hitter of any player in this class on the safety position. I think he's a better athlete. That maybe we're going to give him credit for, at least in tight spaces, explosiveness. I mean, he ran four four nine at his pro day. He had some good explosive numbers. I think this kid is just scratching the surface. He came out as a third year player. He was a redshirt sophomore this year for Washington State. Incredibly productive the last two years. Really good instinctual instinctual football player. Excuse me. So no, I'm not going to play him as a single high free safety. I'm not going to ask him to make a ton of plays from depth and cover three in the middle of the field. Like that's never going to be his role. But in a Cam Chancellor vein. And again, I'm not saying he's Cam Chancellor, but in that type of style, I think this kid could be a plus pretty strong safety in the NFL. I think that he could be a kind of a heartbeat of a defense a little bit. I'm in with Jane Hicks, man. There's something to that kid, and I am buying into that instinctual hitter and intimidator. Give me some Jane Hicks love, baby. Bet Online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit that is a 50 percent welcome bonus bet online where the game starts yeah i'm not surprised that you're in love with the what? enormous safety that doesn't i mean that doesn't dude, shock that, me i mean we, we knew that's your that's your brand dude you always go for no, like no, the big no, no, no. meaty guys and stuff not for safeties know. not not for uh, safeties it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that you like him number four okay. though is my brand cole bishop wait, 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 from number utah five. I, can't, I can't do number five oh, wait, first I You're thought, over. oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry who's your number five you We're idiot, off, uh, you idiot man you it's idiot. been a long day i started working at six damn it's number five well now i know who now. your now I know your number four is which is pretty hilarious because it might actually be my number four as well number five tyler new been from minnesota is number five oh. for me joe i'm so lukewarm on tyler newbin so lukewarm man i get the i get the love right i get it he plays a lot more from depth than what i was just talking with Aiden hicks he's a true cover two cover four heavy interchangeable safety that can play from depth and has really good eyes really good anticipation and really good ball skills. All those things are true. I think his range is very overrated. 
I think it's solid range. I don't think it's tremendous mm-hmm. range. I don't think he's ever going to be a middle of the field, true free safety. I think that he has really good eyes, though, and he's proactive and he's always in the right spot. Okay. His tackling is good sometimes, and then other times his angles are pretty poor. And also he missed tackles, especially off the 2022 film. 2023 was a little bit better in that department, but it's still, it's still there, man. It's still there. So I actually think that this kid is one of the safer safeties in this class. Like I think that his floor is relatively high. I think that he will be a starting safety in the NFL at some point in his career. I'm not certain though, out of my top five, that in why he is number five, that he's gonna ever gonna be a plus starter. I, I just don't know if I see that, man. I see a starting safety who has some ball skills, that's played a lot of football, that's usually in the right spots. That's great. But the missed tackles, and I would call him just a solid athlete. I would not call him very good. I would not call him exceptional. Like he is not anywhere in those categories. I just think he does everything pretty well outside of missing some tackles occasionally. So he was my number two. So we, we, we flipped here on, on Jaden Hicks and Tyler Newbin. And I think you bring up a good point. I think he's very high floor. I, I think that yep. maybe his outlook is probably, probably the smartest, exciting. right? Like the smartest safety in this class. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, like he's very intelligent. Yeah. That's why I feel a little bit better about him than I did with, with Jaden Hicks. I, I thought that his, his tackling, his decision-making, the instincts, it was very consistent. I also think he was really misused. As you talked about, he was playing a lot from depth, and I don't think that is how he's going to be used in the NFL. So any times that he had bad plays at Minnesota, it was because he was put in a position where he was the best guy in the defense and he had to play over the top. But you bring him down in the box, I think he's going to flourish. He's got the frame of a linebacker. He's got the physicality of a linebacker. I just think all the boxes get checked for what you're looking for. And I I know that the, the Jamal Adams prototype and i'm not saying he is jamal adams but like the jamal right. adams prototype is being phased out pretty quickly in the nfl it seems like that there is less of a love for that type of a position mm-hmm. so he might end up getting drafted lower but you still need this guy on your defense and i and i would actually argue it's kind of hard to find these big body dudes who can tackle and are relatively mobile see i didn't like the tackling as much as you did but I, I see there's flashes there. You know what he reminds me of? Mm-hmm. Who was the – dang, it's going to bother me. Who was the safety that came out of Virginia a couple years ago that was drafted by the Chiefs? Oh, I know who that, you're and, talking about, but I'm not going to remember his name. The, I, think he's, I think he's with the Browns now, right? Oh, my gosh. That's, that's actually going to – what's his name? I remember – I obviously evaluated him. My gosh. What is his name? What is his name, Joe? Help me. I'm Help not, not going to remember. Browns depth chart. Brown's depth chart. No, Help me. I'm Juan trying. I'm trying. Juan Thornhill. Yes. You don't need to look it up. It's in my mind. It's okay. in my mind. It was coming eventually, man. Reminds me of Juan Thornhill. Juan Thornhill was pretty good playing the post, but he did it because he was incredibly instinctual and smart. Like he tested really well, unlike unlike Tyler Newbin. Newbin actually did not test overly well, or actually didn't test that well at all, from what I if what I remember, but I think that instinctual nature allows him to play the post, and he's got a decent size profile where he can get better in the run game. I just I was missing it with the physical side consistently. That just wasn't a part of the game that I love. All right, so I, I got too excited a second ago, but I said Cole Bishop is my number four. Now I understand that Cole Bishop doesn't really have the requisite length that we look for in a safety prospect, but what is fantastic about him as a player talking about instincts like this is important for safeties i think he is the quickest decision maker the most reactive out of any of these guys i think he's the best tackler i think he is incredibly physical he was a guy who at at utah was asked to a lot of different things i know that you don't love overhangs but i think that he can fit in very nicely as a strong safety in the in the nfl and more importantly this is a special teams superstar this is a guy who i think is going to be awesome on special teams because he goes a million miles per hour and he hits really freaking hard it's hard to ignore a guy that is incredibly productive so i yeah i have to go with i I, cole bishop number four man i'm i've i've been a big fan of him you gave me shit for being a big fan of him and here i am back again summer too i like my boy no you didn't he's literally he's literally yes i did i did top 150 on him in the summer you idiots like i literally had that he's also number no i was higher on him I was yeah, you might have been. Sl- I mean, you might have been slightly higher on him, but don't act like I didn't like him at all. Like that's that's slanderous. That's just actually you, you not told true. Me at all. You thought he stunk. 
never said uh yeah well the great thing about podcasting is you can just go back to the tape right and listen to what people say it's a Not great world we live in nowadays cold is number four for me as well Look, I don't hate I don't hate overhangs. Overhangs just aren't a thing. They're not real in the NFL. They don't exist mm-hmm. anymore, right? So the NFL actually is the one that hates overhangs. I just accentuate the fact that they hate overhangs. Okay. Cole Bishop, though, I think has the requisite athleticism and short area explosiveness to not just be an overhang. Right? Like he can be a cover three heavy, strong safety that can come down short zone in the box, match up against tight ends occasionally. Like he can do those types of things. He's also in a NFL that is so high on being a sub package based system, right? Playing defensive sub package more than base nowadays. He's the perfect weapon. Like you can play him on the second level from multiple alignments, third and longs. He can be your dime backer. Like he can do a lot of things coming forward, short zone, second level stuff. And he's really good at it. And you mentioned the big point is that some of these guys lack a sticking point, right? Like they, a real true claw to a roster i'm like kalen bullock who was number 10 for me i'm worried about him flaming out pretty quick joe i am oh can yeah he play special teams can he play no teams? i don't think so buddy i don't think so no. cole bishop though cole bishop's gonna last in the nfl and probably be a starter relatively early in his career because he is going to be a premier special teamer like there's no doubt about it i actually thought at one point when he was at utah like Hey man, maybe you just pack on 10, 15 pounds and just linebacker full times. Like he's at, he's he, physical he does play enough. like a linebacker. I mean, he's physical enough to do it, man. So I think there's some limitations as far as playing in depth. I think there's some limitations in coverage, but as a mismatch dictator on the second level and a short zone defender, I think that he's got starting upside in the NFL. No doubt about it. All right. Number three, I think we both have Javon Bullard. We both have Javon Bullard. Yep. Okay. So I think that even though he could be classified as a slot corner, I think he's better classified as a slot safety. He's mighty mouse. It's not super big. You know, he's, he was listed at five foot 11. I think he was smaller than that at the combine, if I remember, but yeah, despite his lack of size does not take away from his aggressiveness. I think that he moves pretty fluidly for his profile. Um, Not like an elite athlete, but moves really well, very easy in coverage. Again, we talk, I mentioned Brian uh, Brian Branch earlier, and it, not yes. a one-to-one comparison, but like similar usage because he's really good in coverage. But I, the similar. thing I liked about him is, one, he's great at closing down gaps, and then, two, yep. he's really aggressive not only attacking ball carriers, but also attacking the ball in the air. So I see a guy who could be pretty productive, could be one of those dudes that goes somewhere on day two, and then you're talking about him in a couple of years, and you're like, wow, Javon Bullard's a really important part of this uh, NFC championship defense that you're talking about. He he's he, I, I know that I know you hate the draft crush thing, right? As far as like my guys and all that type of stuff. But mm-hmm. I feel like bullard has been one of them for me for a while, man. I just, he's one of those guys you gravitate towards because one, he played bigger than his size. Cause you're right. He's not the biggest safety of all time, but he really is a physical and assertive run defender. He could play the slots as far as being a, that alley defender and being able to come up and make tackles in space, play the screen game. He can work inside. Now in the run game, he's really good. And then he's a plus athlete, man. Like he can move well. He can transition back and be able to play from depth and safety at times. He is a true safety nickel hybrid who can kind of rotate down a ton and play in the slot. I just think Joe, that he is one of those guys on this list that might have, I said that I thought that Tyler Newbin was maybe the highest floor player in this class at safety. I changed my mind. It's Javon Bullard. I Mm. I would be shocked if Javon Bullard is not a solid football player in the NFL. Like, absolutely shocked, man. He just does everything well. He might not honestly not be one of those guys that he does everything well to very well. He might not have anything that you would say is elite, elite, but he does also doesn't have a hole where you're just like, yeah, he's, he can't do that at the NFL level. Like he can do just about anything that you need him to do on the back of a defense. I would take him in the top 50 picks. I think that he is a tremendous football player, man. Love Javon Bullard. So we both shared our number twos. Your number two was Jaden Hicks. My number two yes. was uh, Tyler Newbin. Obviously then means Cam Kitchens from Miami is both of our number one. Now, this is a guy who throughout this process has received a lot of overthink. And I think that it has been exemplified because his testing numbers at the NFL combine weren't great. 
I was a little surprised he ran the four sixes, but I didn't necessarily see an athlete on film that was blowing me away. So I wasn't really surprised by the lack of overall good testing numbers, but I am blown away by the ball skills. I think that this yeah. is a true to the name ball hawking safety. I think mm -hmm. you take him at the beginning of the second round. He might not go there, but I would take him at the beginning of the second round and he could be a tremendously productive interceptor. I mean, we've seen plenty of shit defensive backs be productive mm -hmm. in the NFL, like Trevon Diggs. There's plenty of guys who aren't that good, but get these big contracts because they put up all these big interception numbers. I'm not saying that Cam Kitchens is bad, but my point is, is he might not be as athletic as you want him to be, but you put him in the right situation, right defense, let him cook over the top, and he's going to find ways to pick off the ball. He could be a 7 to 10 interception guy for multiple years in his career. I could totally see that. He is one of the guys, Joe, that is the perfect example of, hey, when a guy tests differently than you would anticipate, because I agree with him in the sense of, I didn't expect him to be an elite tester, but I definitely expect him to run better than four, six, five, right? And then low 30 in the vert. And like, those are some bad numbers posted because he's not the biggest safety of all time, but he's one of those guys that forces you to go back to the film and say like, hey. Did I miss something here, man? Was I too high on this? And that's not as functional and that's not as translatable next level. Well, I did go back and watch Cam Kitchens. I literally watched him about two weeks ago. I'm solid in my opinion on Cam Kitchens. I'm solid, right? This kid is the best free safety center fielder in this class. Really good range. Could not care less mm. about the 465 because that kid covers a ton of ground. And we've actually seen some safeties, some of the better safeties in the NFL that we're not great testers. They just weren't, right? So I think that this kid is center field range, great ball skills, really good instincts and in deep zone. I would love him to clean up his tackling a bit because there's actually times where you're like, okay, I see a little bit of pop in the lower half. I see a little bit. I mean, I think he's a willing tackler, but I see a little bit of a feisty demeanor to him. But then there's some tackles on film that are just kind of bug you a little yeah. bit. But then... He forces another interception, another big pass breakup, ranges from backside hash all the way to the opposite sideline for a pass breakup. Like this kid has special range on the back end, man. I don't care if he ran four, six, five functionally on the football field. My guy plays fast. Well, that's it for our safety rankings. We've got quarterbacks, which I am not looking forward to. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Talk to you later.